ASHES research. So the specification requires you to know um, the variables affecting conformity, including group size, unanimity, and task difficulty, as investigated by ASH. So we're going to go into those in a little bit more detail. So in terms of ASHES research, so he wanted to establish the extent that a group pressure can influence an individual's and whether they would conform to a majority in a group's way of thinking. So a set of participants were all seated around the table and each participant was shown um, a card with a reference line drawn on it and another card with three labelled lines. The participants in, had to state out loud publicly which of the three labelled lines matched the reference line. And in each case, the task was designed to be easy. In fact, all but one participants are the Confederates and they would deliberately give the wrong answer. So 123 American students took part. And as I said, the Confederates gave the wrong answer and it was recorded whether the participants would publicly say the correct answer or go along with the group norm. So they found that depending on the size of the group, um, majority uh, went along with, uh, they gave the incorrect answers on 32% of the trials and 75% conforms at least once. So this rate of conformity was much lower when the group size was smaller. So we'll look into variables in a bit more uh, in a bit more detail later, but remain consistent when there were three or more confederates in the experiment. So they concluded that um, group size does exert a strong influence on an individual's um, likelihood of conforming and complying to a group, especially when the individual is in the minority of one. An individual are willing to conform to a majority even though they are clearly wrong. So this is normative social influence. So you could get asked the question to describe how research into conformity has been carried out. So that is for full marks and it is purely asking you for the procedure. So don't tell me the findings or conclusions. So you tell me that 123 American students took part. They were asked to judge a reference line and say which line best represented it um, with the three lines. Um, there were Confederates set around the table that would give the incorrect answer. They had to say out loud publicly which answer they um, thought was the correct line. Um, 12 out of the 18 trials were critical trials where the Confederates would give the wrong answer. Outline one research study into conformity. So that's purely um, Ash's research. So you can do aims, procedures, findings and conclusions for six marks. So it's important that you have enough detail per key research study to give six marks worth of um, AO1 detail. So variations. So to help you remember the variations, the acronym of GUT. So there are three variations that you need to be aware of. So group size. So there was little conformity when the majority was only one or two people. However, under the press pressure of a majority of three, conformity increased to 30%. Um, three was the magic number above three it didn't really have that much difference so when you had four five six confederates it still say, stayed around that 30 percent the importance is that when it went from two to three uh, conformity increased Unani unanimity of the group so uh, when confederates gave all all the confederates gave the wrong answer um, conformity rates was high however when the group wasn't unanimous in their decision, conformity rates dropped. So when they had someone that um, also gave the correct answer, the confederate would give the correct answer, um, the participant would give the correct answer. So social support gives individuals um, more confidence in their decision. Also interestingly, if the confederate gave an incorrect answer, but it wasn't the correct answer but it wasn't what the other confederates said it still gave the um, naive participant the confidence to go against the majority t 
task difficulty. So when Ash made the lines lengths closer together and the task more difficult, he found that conformity rates increased. So it suggests that there is informational social influence happening there because um, it was harder to distinguish if they were looking to others for which is the correct answer. So we have outlined Ash's findings in relation to two variables affecting conformity. So group size, unanimity or task difficulty and briefly explain two limitations of Ash's conformity research for eight marks. So remember eight marks at A level is three marks your AO1 and five marks your AO3. So a third should be AO1 and two thirds should be evaluation. So if we were to look at evaluation in a bit more detail, So because it's a study, we're going to go with the acronym of GRAVE. So can we generalise it? The sample is unrepresentative and it lacks population validity. It was androcentric, so only carried out on 123 males. Um, they were also undergraduate students, so are they representative of a whole population? It's also ethnocentric because it was carried out in America. So would the same findings be applied to other countries? And are we guilty of gender and culture bias in this research? Would women also conform the same as men? So um, carrying a study out on one gender and applying it to the other and saying there is no difference would be beta bias. So this study is beta bias. Reliable. Is it reliable? But it doesn't seem to be consistent across cultures because there are cultural differences. So Smithers et al. Uh, found that average conformity rates in individualistic cultures was about 25%, so in America, whereas in collectivist cultures it was much higher, so about 37%. So it's guilty of being culturally biased and therefore it would be beat bias to apply the findings from the American study to all um, other cultures, in particular collectivist cultures. Is it valid? Well, it was in controlled lab conditions, so um, everything was controlled, all extraneous variables and um, were controlled for, so therefore it reduces the likelihood of any confounding variables and therefore we should be able to establish cause and effect, therefore increases the internal validity of the research, so it had high internal validity due to that strict control of the artificial environment. However, it is an artificial task. Um, judging line length isn't necessarily a task that you would do in everyday life, so it lacks mundane realism. So would it really apply and can it explain everyday conformity and can it explain everyday compliance and going along via normative social influence in an everyday setting? Also, it could be that it lacks temporal validity as well. So it, it might be that it's a child of its time study. It took place in a particular period when conformity rates were high in America, so the McCarthy era, and therefore would the same findings be found if it was replicated today? Ethical issues. There are some um, in terms of the participants were deceived, and but they had to be deceived. So because if they were told the true nature of the task, it might might have affected um, the accuracy of their results and could lead to demand characteristics. To get a 16 marker that's outlined and evaluate research into conformity. So my AO1s would be, my first AO1 paragraph would be Ash's original study, describing the aims, procedures, findings and conclusions getting some key facts and figures in there, such as 123 males, 12 out of the 18 trials were critical trials, there was a reference line, and confederates had to give the wrong answer, what percentage conformed. Then I would move on to a second AO1 paragraph, which would be my three variations and variables that affect obedience, so group size, unanimity, and task difficulty. I would then pick three to four evaluation points, showing a range of detail if I can. Getting some issues and debates and keywords from other topics in there, such as culturally biased, beta bias, um, androcentric, gender bias, 